All right, students, Mr. Wagner here again. Hey, we're going to go over some more notes on waves, I know. You probably don't want to. I'd rather not either. But let's go through this. We're jumping through our hoops. We're going to get some stuff done. I think you guys already saw this um, this note uh, last week when we were talking. So let's continue. Let's move on along to our next note. We're about to go through some wave properties. In other words, like different attributes of waves. So with these, uh, the first wave property that we need to go through is the amplitude. The amplitude of a transverse wave, remember a transverse wave is like a wave on an ocean. The amplitude of a transverse wave is the measurement of the distance between the wave's resting position uh, through the crest or the trough. So take a look at this. Here you can see that we actually have like a pretty large distance between the resting position, and you can follow my cursor. This is the resting position of the wave. And then the height of the wave right here, the height of the wave is its amplitude. If the wave only got up to this high, it would have a smaller amplitude. If the wave got up to this high, it would have a much greater amplitude. So it's essentially saying how tall the wave is. That's its amplitude, at least in a transverse wave. When it comes to a longitudinal wave, the amplitude's a little bit different. Take a look down here. When a transverse wave, we're actually squishing the molecules of a medium together. Did I say transverse? I meant longitudinal. In a longitudinal wave, we're squishing the medium together. So here, you see how the squish is kind of squished, but it's not crazy, crazy squished? Here we're going to say this has got actually pretty low amplitude. But down here it's got a pretty high amplitude because the squish is really, really squished. I'd say it's the difference between hitting a drum gently, that would be a very low amplitude, but hitting a drum very, very hard would make a very, very tight squish of air. So therefore it would have a very high amplitude in that case. So amplitude in a transverse wave is a little bit different than than a um, longitudinal wave. Transverse wave, it's how tall the wave is. In a longitudinal wave, it's how squished the wave is. Great. Now we know uh, about amplitude. Let's talk about how long the waves are. Um, in this case, we're talking about wavelength. The wavelength of a transverse wave is the distance between crest and crest, or the distance between trough and trough. It really doesn't matter which part of the wave that you measure, as long as you're measuring the same part of the wave on the next wave, if you know what I mean. So take a look right here. We're measuring from crest to crest. The distance there is one wavelength, or we can measure from trough to trough. The distance there is one wavelength. But here, it's halfway down the, the wave, and some people might be tempted, oh, I'll measure right here. Wrong! Wrong! Because this is the downswing of one wave, and this is the upswing of another wave. There's more technical terms for that. but um, So we got to go from the downswing of this wave to the downswing of this wave. That would be one wavelength. When it comes to longitudinal waves, the wavelength is the distance between the compressions, the squishes. So in this case, we've got a squish here, and we've got a squish here. If you were to measure the distance, I'm talking even with a ruler or with a meter stick or something like that, the measurement of the distance between squishes, between compressions, that is the wavelength. So the wavelength looks a little bit different for transverse waves than it does for compressional waves or longitudinal waves. Um, let's continue. So uh, there's a simulator we're going to take a look at here in a little bit. We'll see if I can get that on the screen. But it says uh, both the wavelength and the amplitude of a wave indicate the amount of energy it has. So that makes sense. The greater the amplitude of a wave, the more energy it has. Think of a wave on the ocean. If a wave on the ocean is only about that small, you could say the wave doesn't have much energy. But if the wave on the ocean is super duper tall, you could say it's got a lot of energy. Likewise, we've got some waves down here. If it's got a very low amplitude, it's got low energy. If it's got a high amplitude, it's got high energy. Same thing with the longitudinal wave, hitting it like a drum. You hit it softly, very low energy, not much of a compression. You hit the drum really hard, very high energy, you've got a very large compression. So let's take a look at some of these things. And... Um, I think you guys can see what's going on in my screen. Great. Yeah, I think this will work. 
So anyway, we've got a wave simulator. This is on FET. I might have you guys work with this later in the future. But notice um, we can adjust the amplitude. So the amplitude is how tall the wave is. Again, we're using a transverse wave. This is not a longitudinal wave. This is a transverse wave. But let's lower the amplitude first. If we lower the amplitude, look, the wave is not as tall. It doesn't have as much energy. Lower amplitude, smaller wave. When I say smaller, I mean not as tall. Um, so let's increase the amplitude. We'll give it more energy. Look at that. The wave is taller. It's got greater amplitude. It's got greater energy. Happy day, hunky-dory. Let's put that back to uh, normal. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change the wavelength. The measurement of how many waves pass a certain point in a certain amount of time is called frequency. And we're going to get to that in a second. But I'm going to change the frequency here. Let's lower the frequency. Well, I got the frequency down to zero. So let's look at this frequency, right? These are long wavelengths. If you had to measure between crest and crest, it doesn't even fit on the screen, right? So we've got very, very long wavelengths here, which accounts for a very low frequency. We're going to increase the frequency a little bit. Now, if you wanted to measure from crest to crest, you, you probably could. You'd have to get the wave to stop. I think there's a way to do that. Um, I don't know how to. We, let's do that. Bink, like right here. So you can measure from trough to trough. You could use a ruler out and measure that stuff. That would be the wavelength. Let's increase or uh, decrease the wavelength. In other words, make them shorter. So let's do that here. Look at that. Pause. Now you can see that the, the wave is kind of like getting smaller as time goes on, but we go from crest to crest. That distance is the wavelength. Let's go ahead and let's put, see how that changes things. There we go. Anyway, I might have you guys work with this uh, later on in the future. I thought that would just be helpful for you guys. Let's go down and we'll talk a little bit about frequency here. So uh, first off, well, not first off, we've been talking for a while, but frequency. Um, it's the number of waves that pass a certain point in a certain amount of time. That is the frequency. The frequency of a wave is determined by two things. It's determined by the wavelength. So in other words, if a wave has a very, very short wavelength, it's going to have a high frequency. And it's also determined by the wave speed. So if the wave is moving at the speed of light, it's going to have a very high frequency because a lot of crests are passing a certain point in a certain amount of time. Take a look at this down here. We've got a high frequency in blue because there are a lot of crests and a lot of troughs, assuming both of these waves are moving at the same speed. If we assume that they're both moving at the same speed, the blue one has a very high frequency. If we're assuming that the blue one's moving very, very slowly and the red one's moving at the speed of light, then we could say the red one has a high frequency. But if they're both moving at the same speed, blue's got a high frequency, shorter wavelength, red one, longer wavelength, therefore it's got a lower frequency. So let's talk about this frequency garbage real quick. Frequency is measured in a unit called Hertz. Uh, this dude, Heinrich Hertz, came up with it uh, after discovering radio waves back in the 18, uh, 1880s. You don't need to know the dates or anything like that. But um, you know how we, we measure like a unit of force in Newtons after Isaac Newton? Well, we measure um, a frequency in Hertz named after Heinrich Hertz. You may have even noticed that uh, whenever you're... Um, if you look at the little the little sticker on your microwave, it tells you how many kilohertz your microwave works in. Um, or you can even tune in a uh, radio frequency to a certain amount of hertz. So um, that's a measurement of frequency. Uh, here's kind of like a little pop quiz. Let's let's just take a look at this. Your job right here, I know this is going to sound kind of complicated, is to calculate the frequency of the wave. So you might want to pause the video in just a second and then calculate the frequency of the wave and then I'll walk you through it. So go ahead and pause now. Okay, so take a look at this. We're looking at the frequency of a wave. This is a distance of, let's say, one meter. Okay, how many waves occur in this one meter? Some people would say, there's two waves in the one meter. No, 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 no. 
there's only one wave in this meter because take a look at this. We've got one crest, one trough. That accounts for one wave. So if we have one wave in the one meter, in the, oh look, here's the time right down here in one second, the frequency of this wave would be one hertz. It's one hertz. But let's count how many waves there are in this example over here. We go all the way up, down, and back up. There's one wave. Up, down, back up, there's two waves. Up, down, back up, there's three waves. Up, down, back up, there's four waves. Up, down, back up, there are five waves. How long did this take? One second. Five waves in one second, that is five hertz. So five waves in one second, that is five hertz. Um, we're going to skip this for right now, but this is how to calculate wave speed. There's some algebra involved in calculating wave speed. I think we're going to stop right there. But the things that you need to know today, you need to know. Here's our quick recap. You need to know what is a wave amplitude, how high a wave or how or how squished the wave is. You also need to know what a wavelength is. It's how long a wave is from crest to crest, trough to trough. You also need to know about frequency of a wave. It's how many waves pass a certain point in a certain amount of time. Those are the three main things that you need to know today. Have a great day.